Today you'll learn how to create a custom glass effect in Photoshop to apply onto images, shapes, or graphics. And by the end of this process, I'll show you how to repeat everything in one click. Now the first step in this process, assuming that we're working with an image, is to duplicate that image layer and then turn it into a smart object. With the background layer selected, since I just opened this image into Photoshop, I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate it. I'll now right click on that layer and go to convert to smart object. The reason that we'll need to do this is so that we can apply our vector mask a little bit more easily later on in the process. Now we'll select a shape tool to apply our glass effect to. In this case, I'll just create a rectangle. So going to the rectangle tool here within the toolbar, I'll just click and drag over my canvas like so to create a new rectangle shape. The fill color and stroke settings do not matter, but in this case, I do not have a stroke applied to this shape. The next thing I'll do is just round the corners of this shape to make it look a little bit more interesting. Now with this shape created, we want to apply it as a vector mask to our smart object layer. That way we can apply all of our layer styles onto this image layer and we'll still maintain all of the shape editing properties if we want to change the size or the roundness values of that shape and we will not lose quality around that mask. To do that, we just need to hold command or control, click on the thumbnail of the rectangle shape layer, and then drag it to the smart object layer and let go. This will create a new vector mask and leave behind a fill layer, which we can go ahead and delete by clicking and dragging down to the trash icon. Disabling the background layer so you can see what's going on, this is what our layer one currently looks like, and this is where we're going to apply all of our glass effect adjustments to. Re-enabling the background layer, I'll double click on the layer one with the vector mask to access the layer styles. Now to create this effect, there's quite a few different settings that we're gonna be going through. So I'm just going to list them off as I work through them, but I'll also leave them as a list in the description below. So it's easy to review them and just kind of have it in another part of your screen while you do this. So the first settings that we'll go to within the layer styles panel is bevel and emboss. Making sure that this is enabled, we'll set the style to inner bevel, the technique to smooth, the depth anywhere from 100 to 300%. The more of a depth you have, the more intense that pop out effect will look around your glass effect. We'll choose a size of your choice and then a softening value anywhere between three to six pixels. As for the lighting angle, we'll wanna generally use the same lighting angle as what is in our photo. In this case, the light is coming from this direction. So I'll go ahead and change the lighting angle accordingly so that the light or the highlights around this shape are coming from this top corner. Looking at the preview here, you can see how that highlight is now in the top right corner and that matches with the light source in this particular image. We can always change this later as we apply this effect in other images. As for the gloss contour, we'll set it to this option right here. And then for the highlight mode, we'll make sure this is set to white, the mode is set to soft light, and the opacity is at 100%. For the shadows, we'll choose black, blending mode normal, and the opacity you can play around with depending on how intense you want the shadows to look around your glass effect. With these settings complete, we'll go and enable the contour setting. Make sure to click on that menu to access these settings. We'll choose this value for our contour amount and the range will choose anywhere between 50 to 70%. Now we have a shape that has this 3D effect, but it doesn't look like glass in any way. So to fix that, we need to add a highlight across the entire shape so it looks like there's something reflecting on the surface. To do that, we'll go to the gradient overlay. Clicking gradient overlay within the menu settings, we need to first choose the foreground to transparent gradient, which is within the basics folder. So clicking on that, you'll notice that I now have this different color. So if you do not have white, then you need to do the following steps. We'll just click within this gradient preview. This will access the gradient editor. And here we can click on the foreground color stop and change this to white and click OK. Make sure that the transparency is at 100% on this side. If you do not see transparency, you can click on the opacity stop and make sure the opacity is set to 0%. I'll click OK. Next, we can change our style to linear 
radial, or you can also do reflected depending on the effect that you're going for. You can also change the angle of this gradient here. But in this case, I will choose the linear gradient and make sure that the highlight is coming from the highlight direction in the photo, which is over here on the top right. As for your final settings, just make sure your blending mode is normal, dither is enabled, opacity at 100%, and in this case, my mode is set to perceptual. Now with all of these settings complete, we have the base for our glass effect, but rather than having to redo this entire process in the future, we can save this as a custom style to access in future projects. Going to the styles setting, we can go to the new style and I'll call this to tutorial glass effect. Now make sure to include layer blending options and we'll click OK. Now you can click on this layer style in the future to immediately apply these effects onto your photo. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now to finalize this effect, I wanna add a blur that only appears throughout the glass. This is something that we can't add inside of layer styles, so we have to do it manually. When we have an image like this, it's pretty easy to do, but I'll be running through a graphic example in just a moment. But for our image, to apply a blur, we'll select that image layer and go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Now you can increase the blur amount depending on what you like for your glass effect, I'll do something a little bit more subtle like this. I'll click OK. Now we have successfully created our glass effect, but if we were to apply this onto a graphic, the process is going to be a little bit different. So let me explain. Here you can see I've imported a graphic, which is just my logo, and I'll go ahead and use the layer style to speed up the applying of my glass effect. Double clicking on the logo layer to access layer styles, I'll go to the style setting and choose the layer blending mode that I just created. The problem here is that it just adds this 3D gradient effect to the graphic. So if we wanted this to be transparent, we could go to our blending options and set the fill opacity to 0%. This will remove any color within the graphic, but still maintain its shape. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now when I grab my move tool, you can see how this glass effect is applied. If any of the effects are too intense, we can double click on the gradient overlay setting and then go ahead and reduce the opacity of this setting or even change the angle depending on what you would like for your image. You can also go ahead and add a drop shadow if you would like playing around with some of these settings with a black shadow to make that logo pop a little bit more. I'll click OK. Now the problem is, just like before, this logo doesn't blur anything that is behind it. So to do that, we need to duplicate our image layer first and use a clipping mask. Going to my background layer, I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate it, and I'll drag this above the logo layer. I'll now right click on that duplicated layer and go to Create Clipping Mask so it will only appear within the contents of the logo layer. Now with this clipped image layer, we can apply a Gaussian blur by going up to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur once again. We can choose whatever blur amount we would like, and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, since nothing has happened here, this is because we removed the fill opacity within our layer styles. So I'll double click on my logo layer, go to the blending options and increase the fill opacity so I can see the blur behind the image. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now with this clipped blurred layer, I can move this anywhere I would like and it's going to diffuse that image because the position of our clipped layer matches the background. So that way we can use this glass effect wherever we would like. Now the same steps would apply if you were using another shape or if you wanted to apply this to text, for example, you can continue to use your layer style and then a clipped blurred image layer like we have right here to complete your effect. So again, if you haven't already followed along, just remember that all of the settings required for this are in the description below so you can easily follow along. But with that, I'll see you back here next time.